Hi, everybody, and welcome to the last video on um, two-dimensional flows. So in this video, we'll be dealing with the missing part of this folder. So we'll essentially be dealing with the active barriers. And we will, extracting, we will be extracting barriers to the transport of active vectorial quantities, such as, for example, velocity or vorticity, um, from two-dimensional velocity data. So if we take a step back and take a look at what we've been doing so far. So, so far, we've been focusing heavily or extensively on the advective barriers. So we we're basically looking for, OK, we were looking for exceptional surfaces. And by exceptional, I mean um, either the most stretching or the most shearing and material lines, uh, which somehow shaped the distribution and the evolution of tracers uh, in, the, in the velocity field, so in the flow. Such methods include, for example, um, extracting hyperbolic LCSs or hyperbolic OECSs, as well as elliptic structures from um, two-dimensional velocity data. And the methods that we've been using back then were, the, for example, the FTLE field or the PRA field or some more advanced techniques. Then we've been focusing on uh, diffusion barriers. So we're basically looking for barriers to the diffusive transport, and we're looking for barriers which either maximally inhibited or maximally enhanced the transport of um, diffusive uh, scalars. These might, for example, include the, uh, the plankton concentration in the ocean. And then one can, could extend this theory uh, for, the trans for, the, for um, getting diffusive barriers also to stochastic barriers by simply modeling the stochastic process as um, a Sabina process and and, um, and 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 then then just applying the same techniques that we use for diffusion barriers also to stochastic barriers. Now in this video we'll be focusing on the active barriers, and I would recommend that you go through this paper here, um, published in 2020, where essentially these objective barriers to the transport of uh, dynamically active vector quantities have been defined. And again, by by we will generally be looking at at so the two most common active vectoral quantities are the linear momentum, so basically, which is related to the velocity, and um, the vorticity. By active, why, why active? Because essentially the velocity and the vorticity, they are directly coupled to the, to the, um, to the underlying velocity field, so to the underlying flow, basically. And of course, these barriers need to be material and objective. And what emerged is that um, these, these objective barriers maximally inhibit the diffusive transport of these active vectorial quantities. Why? Because, for example, if we take a look at linear momentum, or if we take a look at the Navier-Stokes equation for, uh, for a fluid, which is written down here, then one could basically subdivide this into a viscous and non-viscous part. And it emerged that the viscous part is essentially the objective part. So um, this will be will be the, the quantity we'll be interested in. And we'll be looking for barriers to this to the transport of, of this diffusive um, diffusive uh, quantity essentially. And it emerges that so if we scroll up again, so the, the, the final statement is that the, the transport barriers that we um, that we detect will maximally inhibit the diffusive transport of a dynamically active vector field. And this can be, as I said, either linear momentum or angular momentum or vorticity. Now, of course, for each of this of these active vectorial quantities, so-called barrier equations were derived, which again, let me scroll down. So for so for each of these vectorial quantities, one can derive barrier equations. Um, and we for the moment will be focusing on two-dimensional flows. And one can derive essentially Eulerian or Lagrangian barrier equations. So depending if you're looking into, into an instantaneous or into the Lagrangian uh, behavior. So for example, these barrier equations uh, for uh, Navier-Stokes flows um, for the linear momentum take the following form, where the first one is basically the Lagrangian setting and the second is the Eulerian. And you can see that this is basically just the viscous part of the Navier-Stokes equation. Then one can similarly derive um, such equations for the vorticity, and you will be seeing that uh, for the vorticity, 
um, the, the instantaneous barrier equations, you don't have uh, the Laplace of the velocity there, but you will essentially have the Laplace of the vorticity there. So basically we'll be looking for, for um, so we'll be studying these equations and we'll be looking for invariant manifolds of these equations. Now the advantage of these equations here is that they're, they, they, you don't no longer have any time dependence. So if you take the gradient of this, you, you basically, in the, in the Eulerian setting, for example, you take a snapshot and then you take the gradient of this velocity field, and then the barriers to the diffusive transport of, um, of um, the linear momentum will be invariant manifolds of this barrier equation, essentially. And one can study these by using simple tools, such as, for example, the FTLE fields. What we will be doing is we'll be running the FTLE field or a PRA or any type of diagnostic that you that um, we've basically put forward for the attractive barriers, you can run these diagnostics and also for these, for these um, barrier equations. And in fact, that's what we'll be doing. So um, the folders are essentially here inside this active barriers. And we, as I said, you can, you can so these, these uh, folders here essentially contain the notebooks where we basically run the diagnostics on the corresponding barrier equation. Whereas these uh, notebooks here, are simply the notebooks which define the barrier equations. So for example, if you take a look at, at this instantaneous active momentum notebook, what it does is it, it if, if this is the barrier equation for the instantaneous um, linear momentum, then this notebook simply computes the right-hand side. So it simply computes an interpolant for the right-hand side of this equation here. Similarly, if I go back and take a look at, for example, the, the Lagrangian active vorticity, then this notebook, what it does, it simply computes the barrier equation, so this right-hand side, for um, the Lagrangian vorticity. And then once you have this equation here, so once you have the interpolant for this equation here, then you can simply run, as I said, the classic tools that we've been using also for the advective barriers. So let's, if we go back, for example, to the instantaneous active momentum barrier equation, well, what does it require as input? You need to have the gradient of the vorticity Time is fixed here, so the time is fixed, and J is simply the skew symmetric matrix. This new and and rho are um, basically not so important because, anyways, uh, since this is an autonomous ODE, you can simply omit them, and 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 you don't you don't need to keep them to keep track of them, and you don't even need to know them actually. So what this does is, of course, the function here takes as input the grid, so the x and y grid the uh, omega and an auxiliary grid which is used to compute the spatial derivatives so this auxiliary grid simply defines how fine the resolution of the spatial derivatives will be and what this script simply does is it computes interpolants so of course we'll have one interpolant for the x and one interpolant for the y so we have let, let's say um this will be a list of length two sorry this will be a list of length two, where the first element simply indicates the um, the first dimension of this ODE and the second element simply the second dimension of this ODE. And if we take a look at now our main notebooks, one can, for example, run the, the PRA. So we've been running, um, I mean, the notebooks are structured in the following way. Of course, I will be using the turbulence data set. So um, we're using turbulence data, which satisfies naturally the Navier-Stokes equation. Then I will simply uh, need to define computation parameters and define spatial temporal domain. Then I will be computing instantaneous linear momentum barrier from the uh, active polar rotation. So I will take this act, this uh, this barrier equation for the linear for the instantaneous linear momentum, and I will be simply running the PRA on this equation. Once we run the PRA or any type of diagnostic um, that we've talked about so far on this barrier equation, um, we denote this simply as an active diagnostic, so a, a PRA. So essentially, this becomes our new velocity field, where keep in mind, this is not a velocity field, but, but it, it acts basically as a velocity field. Um, as a velocity field in the act advective uh, barrier case, and we'll be computing these the PRA, for example, on this velocity field. Now, again, time here is fixed because this is a Eulerian diagnostic. So time here is fixed. You actually just need one snapshot, and you do this integration. So, of course, you need to compute the particle trajectories, and you compute these trajectories over um, 
over an arbitrary time interval, so over a dummy time. And since this is a this is an um, an autonomous ODE, actually you can you can um, the you can actually keep do the integration as long as you want, basically. And of course, the longer the integration, the more precise. However, one one issue with the long integration is that um, if you have any numerical errors, which eventually you do have generally, um, then choosing a too long integration might lead to amplification of the noise. But the, conceptually, you can choose the integration as long as you want. Um, and then one can actually visualize. So this is basically the script here is the same as the as the as the one we as the PRA uh, notebook in the advective barrier case. The only difference being is that but we no longer need the velocity field, but we just simply need to compute the interpolant for the uh, for the active barrier equation. In this case, for linear momentum, and this is done uh, simply in this section here, where as you can see, I I need to I need to um, to pass the the vorticity over over the mesh grid at a fixed time instant t naught, which I need which I specified here at the beginning. So this is basically the snapshot I specify, and as an output, I simply get the interpolant for linear momentum. And again, this is a list of containing two um, two arrays, where one arrays or oh, two interpolants, sorry, where one interpolant is basically just for the x and one for the y. This is basically acts the same role as the interpolant for the velocity field in the advective barrier case, basically. And then one can compute again the active PRA as we have done for a regular PRA in the advective barrier case. So this is basically just a copy paste function. The only difference is that here, so in the gradient of the flow map, you do not pass the interpolant velocity field, but you pass the interpolant of these active barrier equations. Once we've done it, we can plot the results. And as a comparison, I've shown here uh, four pictures. So the first picture is basically the instantaneous version of the PRA, uh, which of course is undefined. So it, it I mean, it's, it's basically, if you take, if it, it, it gives you nothing, it's, it's, um, why? Because the PRA essentially relies on the computation of the gradient of the flow map and in instantaneous limit, um, you don't get any, any, any significant results for the PRA. Um, then, of course, these pictures here are the active PRA over over some um, some some finite time interval, and I've chosen here different time intervals, which you can and then, of course, the time interval of the dummy integration is is specified. Um, so is specified here essentially. So this is basically the time interval of the dummy integration. And I've chosen to visualize it with respect to a couple of time different time intervals, um, and that's the that's the result that you get. So of course, if you increase the time interval, you can see that more and more structures are highlighted, and you get a better and better resolution. Of course, if you keep increasing it, it might be that you get also that you amplify the noise, which is uh, a bit unfavorable. Um, but this is just uh, arising from a numerical. Uh, fact, but conceptually you can you can actually do this integration as long as you want, and of course the longer the integration, the more finer and better the structures. As a comparison, one can also, for example, compute or take a look at a script of the um, Lagrangian linear momentum, and one could also run the the FTLE on them. Again, the only thing that changes here is basically the barrier equation. So this barrier equation changes, but otherwise it's essentially the same. And then you can run this and, and you get these beautiful structures where this one here is simply the regular FTLE. So here we've just been running the regular FTLE on, um, on this turbulence data. And here is the active uh, FTLE um, on the Lagrangian linear momentum barrier equation that you can see you get much, much more structures. And these, these ridges basically uh, inhibit the, the diffusive transport of the, of, um, the linear momentum. With that, I uh, definitely invite you to check out this paper here. Um, I do not recommend to run the script without knowing the theory, so without without going through the through the paper and understanding what you're doing. Um, in case of any questions, then just feel free to contact me. I'm happy to answer them. And if not, if nothing else um, pops up in your mind, then I'm happy to see you in the next video on uh, 3D flows.